Welcome to Safe and Sound. I'm your host, Kirk Webb. And on today's show, we have Brandy Spires with Summit Healthcare. You are the practice director, if I got that right. Yes. And also Kim O'Farrell from Navajo County Emergency Management, um, Public Health. Um, what else is it that you do, Kim? Well, I, I wear many hats, but I am um, the training officer for Public Health Emergency Preparedness as well as the PIO officer. And it's kind of a small department you work in, so that's kind of why the many hats and yes. kind of everybody shares. And, Correct. And, but it's, it's nice to see that things are progressing and you've actually gotten some new help recently. And, we did. And uh, I'm looking forward to actually working with you and some of the, the stuff we go into the schools and, and trying to educate our, our young people and, and helping them to stay safe and things like that. It's so, always a good time for yeah, sure. It is. And, and Brandy, what's a, a practice director? So I help oversee some of our um, physician clinics that are associated with Summit Healthcare and just kind of help manage those and, and take care of everything they need to keep operations going. So these are kind of like the outlying uh, clinics and things like that, not Correct. right at the main. So kind of try to keep them all in line. That's, that sounds like a little bit of a daunting task. <laughs> it's a great task. I enjoy it. Well, good. And uh, so today we're here to talk about what a pod is. And, you know, I know it. You know, in the fire service, uh, we we use a lot of acronyms, military service, things like that. So, what is a pod? So, a pod is a point of dispensing. That's um, an area in which um, we would dispense medication out to our population. Okay, and and we've been doing this. I know I've been involved with you know, at some different level throughout the years. And, and I, we started this quite a while ago. It's been several years that we've been doing this. And right. what's the main purpose for doing this type of, because we always called it an exercise, a pod exercise, right? Yes. So what, when we're doing this, what's going on? So what is going on is we are practicing our operations during this exercise. So we want to make sure that at our each pod location, um, things are running smoothly and um, all of our staff knows really what's going on. But we're also helping to educate our public in the event of an emergency in which we needed to get massive medication out in a hurry. They know exactly where to go and, and what this is going to look like when they arrive. Right, and, and the reason the hospital's involved is, I mean, they actually work on acquiring the the medications whatever it happens to be at that time right yeah so we assist in getting um, like the flu vaccines um, some of the supplies that are needed to um, initiate some of those vaccines and also um, we have several staff members that assist in those exercises as well in each of the different communities we have staff members from those clinics that come and help during those days that we hold pods in those areas Right, because in the event there is some tragic thing that happens and, you know, I mean, not to kind of reference what's going on right now, but there's a possibility if there is a vaccine created for this uh, coronavirus 19, there's a possibility that could be very useful in being able to get this out to the public, correct? That's correct. So, so what is a process that you kind of go through doing this pod exercise? So um, we, we have many partners um, that we work with throughout the county, Summit being one of our, our big partners, um, the fire departments are, are the others, and uh, law enforcement also comes into play um, with these pods. But um, so we work with them all. We, we set up the, the location. Um, typically the, the fire departments will run their their uh, area because if this were a real life event I wouldn't be on scene um, to help that uh, that pod function I would be back at the the warehouse or wherever I'm needed to make sure that those medications are going out in a timely manner so um, because the exercise itself that we're that we use it's it's not like a, an extended time. It's usually, no. what, two to four hours? Correct. Most of our pods run three hours, and we're running just 
um, people through. It's a drive up process. Um, the, right. the fire departments that we work at, um, if we're if we're working out of a building, they have drive through bays. So we're we're having the folks drive through. They fill out um, the paperwork, answer a few questions, and then um, they remain in their vehicle. They go through the um, vaccination station or it, if it were like an anthrax event or something like that, they would receive um, oral medication um, and they would just stay in their vehicle. We'd hook them up and out they go. So the intention is to be able to see how fast and, and efficient that we can run large amounts of people. Correct. And that's where the, so like you, you say, the location is very important because if it's a small parking lot and you have to go in and then back out, well, that's not very it's efficient. It's not efficient. So those drive-through bays. That's correct. And we also, um, we are under a time constraint in the event of an emergency. We have limited hours in which to get this medication out to our population. And that is the reason that we we exercise this to, to manage that proficiency. We like to we like to get vehicles through in under two minutes. Um, right. And, and the other thing too is you never know where, like you mentioned anthrax. I mean, that could happen anywhere and that's why you pick multiple different locations. I know with when we've worked with us and our fire districts, um, both before when I was with Lakeside and then now with Timber Mesa, we, we choose different stations, see what works best, big, large parking lots. I know we've right. used a, a church parking lot, which kind of comes in, quite handy, you got lots more space to work with. Um, but then where in the county could this occur? It could occur anywhere. And so we have to keep that in mind. We also have to um, distribute that process through a number of different people. There's not, um, if we put this all on one agency to take care of, that would be a lot of work for them and we may miss our mark as, that, as far as that time constraint. Right. Um, Summit also, they operate a, a pod for us um, behind the hospital too, which works out really well. Yeah. And of course, now with the expanded, uh, the new buildings that uh, they're to the north of the existing uh, building, larger parking lots, have you, are you looking at doing the exercise in those areas or is that kind of down the future? We've looked at um, different areas. Um, we've seen how well it works, what doesn't work uh, when we're doing the exercises. And we're always looking for, you know, that one spot that's gonna be great and that we can continue each year because if we change the location every year, then the public isn't gonna know quite where to go. Um, I mean, we do have that expanded area that would work well in case of emergencies. Um, and you know we're kind of in the planning phase of the locations right now so hopefully we can get those pinned down and get that information out soon right and and of course now with the expanded parking lots a lot of that parking that was in the back is is now moved to the front where it's easier for them to get where they work and and go get uh for their appointments and whatnot so yes it's it's kind of alleviated a lot of issues in the in the long run hasn't it yes it has it's so, helped a lot yeah and uh you know and, and looking at so what if it goes outside of the area is as because navajo county we know that county stretches like for miles it does <laughs> so we work with a, a lot of our um our like our tribal partners for example and um they would in essence, come and get their their medication and operate their own. Um, so they're doing similar exercises as well and, and looking for those locations. Correct. Because you never know. Yes. You and just it, 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 yeah. You don't know. <laughs> and so with with all of this, you know, I know that when we started doing this years ago, and we thought, ah, oh, this is never going to happen. But if you don't practice it then whenever that, I mean, look what we're in right now. Right. And, and kind of the chaos that is being created because of what's happening and, and not just here in our area, but across the nation. Um, things are a little crazy. We definitely want to make sure that we're 
we're up and you know operational and and we're continuing that we have a number of different um, folks that come in and work in our pods every year a lot we use a our nursing staff um, the hospitals nursing staff we use paramedics we use um, nursing students and paramedic students as well who are proctored so um, th there's a lot of different folks Right, because in every year with with some of these folks, like the nursing students, they typically aren't um, able to do those types of skills until they've actually been a nursing a, a nurse at that point, right? And and so they kind of because of being in an emergency, they're now allowed to with training and and to provide that vaccination, correct? With their with their proctor, on, right? So they're yeah. supervised correct. and all of that. But because if we're trying to keep, if you're two minutes for a vehicle running through, we're moving people, filling out paperwork. Sometimes that just takes the two minutes right, right. there, right? And so, right. so it's it's a whole process of of step by step, and 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 they're in their vehicle, they don't get out. So how do we provide for safety? Because have, has anybody gotten run over? No, we, and in each at each location, we do have a safety officer who acts as that person who says, whoa, 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 something's not right. And um, it's a very, uh, in my opinion, we, we are very efficient in our pods and we've got, um, we've had several years to practice, so. And, and it takes more than just a nurse or a medic or because you've got other things that need to happen to keep that safe. That's right. So you get somebody running traffic control. That's right. That's, that's my job, I like the traffic <laughs> control. <laughs> yes, yes. We have we have law enforcement on scene to secure the medication. When the medication comes to us uh, at, at the county, it it's being transported um, by uh, by a company, but there's law enforcement um, with them, and and it remains under law enforcement or secure. Because um, you got to track every one of these. We do, but we it, it has to remain under security at right. all times. So um, from us to the pods and until it goes into back into storage and yeah. or or to the next location. Yep. So and it's and it's a it, it comes a, a very time consuming process from start to finish. I mean, you start planning this a few months ahead of time, right? Typically, we do. With this year, we've we're a little bit um, we're with everything that's been going on this year. We're a little bit behind, but we are um, planning for the flu vaccinations. Which is still nice that you've done it in the past because now a lot of that that legwork is already that's correct done. Mostly um, when we when we meet at this point in the game, we're just really discussing, you know, the things that may need improvement from last year and we go over that and we talk about when the vaccines are coming in and and who's going to be where who's you know who's going to be our vaccinator because you typically is you're working with the flu vaccine correct yes and we never know which exact vaccine they, they try to predict what's going to happen and and whatnot so that's a, that's a whole nother science discussion off to the side um but uh do you always know exactly when that's going to be available? So every year it kind of differs depending upon the uh, vaccine companies. Um, so we we get a, an ETA from those companies and we try to plan them around that. Uh, we've had a couple years where they did get delayed and we've had to push back a few pods, just a few dates. But most of the time we have a pretty good date of when they will arrive and then we can plan for our um, pods in the different locations based off that. And, and do they always provide you the same number of vaccines or is it, does that vary as well from your So year? we like to uh, project it off of previous um, pods that we've had. Um, you know, Navajo County keeps a very good detailed notes of everything that's occurred, the numbers that we've seen. Um, there's, you know, but with the pre-planning and the after action reports, we can get some pretty good statistics to know how many vaccines we need to order for the next year. 
And I know we always look at the, well, how can we, like you say, when, you, when we do that after action and how can we improve and do better, we always want to try to see if we can get more people uh, to go through to, to get those, those numbers of how many cars can go through and what, how long does it take to actually do it. Right. Um, right. We see, every year we see our pods growing more as you know our we heber um the that community really looks forward to to their pod event and and we get a lot of their population through so it each one grows every year right and and so it it, it kind of, especially if you're moving with us where we've done it in different we've done it in lakeside we've done it down here in sholo a couple of different locations in sholo and um i think we've done it in linden uh, so it's so getting that advertisement out as to where you're going to usually you only have what two or three weeks to get that information of where that locations are going to be correct yeah so uh, we work pretty closely um, with summits marketing and they really get a lot of stuff out for us for these pods um, they put it out on social media they put it on the radio they um, put it in the newspaper. So we have several areas that we can advertise to really get the word out fast. And I know with social media, it's been kind of, that's getting more and more uh, used properly uh, to be able to get some of this information out. And, and there's lots of different uh, uh, social media platforms that uh, right. people are using it. And it's a good way to get information out quick and, and things like that. So it's it's nice working with a marketing team to to do this. Yeah, we advertise it very heavily on on the summit pages and the Navajo County pages. Each fire department takes the advertisement and puts it up on their their social media platforms and So what are some of the areas you're looking at uh, setting this up this year? So our our areas will still be the same. Um we have one here in Cholo. Um, last year we did it at the Timber Mesa admin building off right. out, um, across from the airport and I, I believe we'll stick with that. We haven't had that discussion yet so it may <laughs> revert back to right. the, the big stake center there off the deuce. But um, we will do one up at the Blue Ridge High School and um, Summit um, Hospital of course, um, Joe City Fire, Heber, Taylor Snowflake Fire. So that's a good amount of, I mean, how many was that? Eight different locations, I think it was? Oh, seven, yeah, six, seven. Yeah, and so, and that's, and you can't do them in the same day. No. So that takes a little bit of time and effort, and because I know if, if you're still doing it the same way when I did it years ago, we set up the big tents that the emergency management has, um, which are even able to drive, make a drive-through so you can, if there are, elements right. you know rain snow whatever the case might be because it's always a good idea to practice how to set them things because they don't set up very easy no they don't <laughs> they're it takes a crew in itself to yeah. set one of those up and uh but you know but there's more there's tables there's chairs there's canopies there's all kinds of and, and that's where it's it's nice to have a lot of help yes Yes, we are very lucky in our partnerships that, that we do have. Right, do especially have with the fire departments. Help. They usually have a lot of that stuff already in-house. And the crew's right there to set it up. Hopefully they're not on some kind of emergency call. Um, I know we've even dealt with when uh, we've got the actual pod set up and we've had to make sure to bring in extra help so that we don't take away from the on-duty crews, that yes. they're still available to respond and a lot of times they are on scene at the pod to be the background help. And if they leave, it's not going to be detrimental to, to the effectiveness of the pod. Right. So it's, it's nice to have lots of help there. And uh, so with, with all of this, is there, I mean, have you had any feedback from public what they like about it? They really love the convenience. Um, I hear, I, I, get, I go to every pod and, and I do the, the paperwork section right. part of it. So I really get to talk with people and, and provide a little education each time. 
Um, and, and time and time again, that's what I hear. They're so very grateful um, for the chance to have the vaccination, but they really just love the convenience of you're in and out, you know? We, each year we do a, a canned food drive with our pods and, and we get lots of donation. Um, and people are happy to hand those cans over, but, and they never have to leave their vehicle. And, and the cost for this vaccination? It's nothing. Yeah, they're free of charge. So, so now I know it doesn't come free of charge to somebody. Somebody's picking up the tab here somewhere, right? Yeah, so the vaccines come through the Summit Foundation. So our foundation board um, sponsors those. And, and this foundation is, is separate. It's, well, it's, it's kind of tied to the, the hospital itself, but they are actually a, a nonprofit um, entity in itself and they so they're the ones that whatever donations and things like that comes from this foundation if I'm correct correct and and so there's I mean how many people are involved in the foundation itself on the board or uh, on the board of the foundation I don't know the complete number of it I mean we have quite a few members on there um, but like I said they are the ones that that fund the vaccines for us each year and so that way it's, it's no cost to the public and they're able to get that vaccine. And that's one of the things that, like you mentioned, where people are loving this, they're able to, because in some cases, some of these people, they can't afford to go get the vaccination. So this is a lot, a great way to provide that uh, service to the community and, and, and the Summit Foundation. So if, if people have the ability or know about any fundraiser and things that the foundation provide is, is looking for, just think about some of the things that they do. I know they've helped us out in the ed public education realm of things of providing money for us to, to do some of the things we go into the schools and things like that. So it's always good to kind of pay it forward. So if you get that opportunity, uh, to help the foundation out uh, and it's don't pass it up is what I'm you know the, the, they work some great things I, and I'm sure they do lots of other things as well of course yes so so we're about um, out of time is there is what with doing these pods what why do you keep doing it is there something personal that helps you want to I mean, I personally what drives you to do love this? love the pods. They're one of my favorite events that we do every year. But um, it really is about the safety of our community. Um, it's about the education of our community, knowing in the event of an emergency that this is, this is where they go, this is what the operation is going to look like. And, you know, working in public health, that's, that's what we care about. That's our... Well, and, and, and you mentioned the anthrax thing, and I don't know, don't mean to put you on the spot, but let's say there was one, an outbreak, something with an anthrax kind of thing, because uh, I know we've had um, uh, letters mailed to, like, the, uh, down at the, the, complex. the, the court, <laughs> and could have possibly been, how long does it take to get some kind of medication for uh, that kind of situation. So the order, uh, once once we know or we even suspect, that order is is it's going. So typically, um, it will be shipped to us within forty eight hours. So so if you have to quarantine, lock down a, a group of people in a in a complex or something like that, they can be able to get that. And, and of course, with the hospital, they're going to probably jump in and start bringing in. Uh, personnel to start uh, evaluating people as well correct yeah and so so it's a joint effort Very so much. so these exercises is doing more than just getting a flu vaccine out that's correct it? you know none of us here or in any community can do it alone it it ta it truly takes an army to make sure that everyone is is safe and we're prepared in the ways that we need to be to yeah and and the way things are going these days in in our uh, nation and in the world kind of makes you take a step back and think a little bit doesn't it yeah and and one you know i know i used to say think or not say but think in myself that 
You know, things like that can never happen in small town Arizona, but we're seeing some pretty awful things. And and, and they do. They ha I mean, anything can happen anywhere. Yeah. And, you know, this is just a small piece of, of the big plans that, you know, we have from the public health side, um, the emergency management side. I know Summit has their own, you know, plans of operation. So um, this is, the pods are just one small piece in, in right. keeping our community safe. And, and the thing I do like about it, not to be, talk about all the bad, but there's so much good that goes on in our there communities is. too. And so there's always that positive. And, and if we just stop and, you know, like I tell some people, it's like, you just gotta take a moment to stop and smell the roses. And you know, there's doesn't matter what situation you're in. There's always something good to come out of that. You know, just you got to look for the good, and and don't dwell on the negative. That's right. It's okay to mention it, but uh, everything has a positive, <laughs> that's a positive right. side to it. Well, I appreciate you guys coming on the show and and talking about this. I, I think there's you know a lot of people that don't know what that is or that's even available. Um, and so hopefully they'll be looking for that. And typically these happen when? Usually starting in October. Okay. Um, end of September, start of October is usually when we try to at least initiate the first one. And then they usually occur at different weeks at different locations. And so we're hoping towards the end of September, first part of October, we can get the first one initiated and going. So you miss one somewhere, you can drive to another one, right? That's yes. right. Excellent. That's right. Normally we do them on Fridays and Saturdays. Um, but for the most part, they're held on Saturday. And just watch our Facebook pages, both Summit um, and the Navajo County Emergency um, Management, as well as the Navajo County Government pages and, and all the local fire departments will, will have it. Well, thank you. Well, Kim and Brandy, thank you for joining us on the show today. And thank you guys for watching Safe and Sound. We'll see you next month.